welcome back. I'm pleased to I'm pleased now to present our next event, the online strategic meeting on Silk Road's ICH networking. Today we will hold the first session, which is about case studies on vitalizing the Silk Roads, specifically on ICH festivals and sustainable development. I invite Mr. Sun Yong Kim, the director of the Korea Central Asia Cooperation Forum for the Secretariat to take the chair as the moderator for this session. Uh, for this session. Uh, Mr. Kim is currently the executive director of his organization. Among his many achievements, he has also served as special advisor to the executive secretary of the United Nations, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Peterson, for your the word, um, warm introduction. Um, also, I'm so much happy to be here with you. Um, this is Sung Kim, as introduced, um, Korea Central Asia Forum Secretariat. Um, I, 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 understand, I'm, I believe the Forum Secretariat would be um, a little bit strange to, uh, to you. So let me shortly uh, brief you on the uh, Secretariat. The Secretariat, uh, the uh, Korea Central Asia Forum is the um, intergovernmental organization between Korea and five Central Asian countries, including um, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, um, the mostly the Silk Road, uh, along nine the Silk Road countries. Um, they are covering the uh, very comprehensive um, cooperation activities, including uh, social, uh, economics, and cultural as well. Um, the Secretariat um, is now assisting the, the forum. And also, um, they, this is the behind the regional. We are actively engaged in the each cup. The full aim would be the international imp information and networking uh, center for intangible cultural heritage in the Asia Pacific region. Um, and also to join this honorable ICH in, in intangible cultural heritage uh, networking the meeting here. Um, I think um, the, the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage is getting more active and also very um, the systematic. And also um, international community as well, they emphasized um, the, the role of local communities and also um, many local government also the, um, encourage their communities to join in the uh, safeguarding in, uh, intangible um, cultural heritage and also the, prom uh, the promotion. And also the, um, the UNESCO uh, member countries also uh, highly command the role of um, the local communities and also potentials um, when it comes to protecting and safeguarding intangible cultural heritages. Um, uh, but in the meantime, the current system to encourage local communities engagement needs to be um, maybe the strengthened. Today, we'll address how um, the ICH festival influence and also effect on local communities. Um, so uh, let me... Um, yeah, today, the, more than any, anything else, I'm so much happy uh, to take the role of a uh, moderator here. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, is it possible to check the, through online the today's participant? Is it possible? So um, I'm wondering if you can hands up. Dear should allow me uh, deputy director? No? <laughs> Okay, the, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, very good, very good. And also, um, on behalf of um, Shaburia Sholtong, ADLB uh, Director General, Mr. Chinara Bulshin Baipo. Okay, and uh, Kanjada Yeshanapu uh, uh, Chairperson. And also, I understand now the, um, okay, the di uh, also, yeah, the, the um, director Kim Juho here, and also Ambassador, I, I certainly believe Ambassador Shuato Jumai will certainly uh, join, join our session. Then, now let's go into the, the main session here. Uh, first, um, I would like to um, invite 
um, yeah, the deal, uh, deal showed Lahami. Mr. Lahami is the deputy director of the Research Institute of Culture and Information of the Ministry of Culture of Tajikistan. He is also a member of the Economic Council of um, ECOS, the International Institute for Central Asia uh, Studies. He has earned a doctor's in yeah, folklore at the uh, Ludaki Institute of Language and Literature and in Dushanbe, uh, Tajikistan. Uh, Mr. Lahimi, um, yeah, yes. can you make a presentation on your subject here? Sure. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Son uh, Min Kim. Uh, Uh, I hope you can see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see you. Thank you. I can hear you. So, sorry. Yeah. So my uh, presentation uh, is uh, about ICH, uh, the role of festivals for ICH safeguarding within local communities. Uh, in uh, the case of Tajikistan. But uh, uh, in the beginning, I would like to uh, uh, to tell you some words about ICH in Tajikistan. Uh, in uh, August 17, 2010, the parliament of Tajikistan adopted ratification on the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage in the territory of the country. And Tajikistan became a member of uh, 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of ICH. Following that, the national list of intangible cultural heritage in the territory of Tajikistan was prepared. This list was, uh, this list was uh, updated five times till today. And in my 31st, 2012, was issued decree of the government of Tajikistan on safeguarding a project on intangible cultural heritage of the Tajik people for the years 2015-2020. Executive organizations, our Ministry of Culture, uh, Academy of Sciences of Tajikistan, Television and Radio, Radio Committee, and Departments of Culture of the districts, cities, and uh, regions of Tajikistan. The goals of this project are to safeguard the intangible cultural heritage from disappearing um, reviving so, uh, some yeah. of good traditions, Mr. Lahimi? helping and supporting performers, uh, masters in continuation of tradition. Also endorsing cultural elements accessible for wide use, study and preparing books, uh, Mr. Filming, Lahimi? musical discs, arg organizing folk festivals, cultural comp competitions, and different exhibitions. Mm. Uh, compilation and publication of illustrated multi-volume encyclopedia of intangible cultural heritage of the country is another project project's activity. Till today, we have published uh, four volumes of this encyclopedia. It is in Tajik language, uh, with uh, full of illustrations. <clears throat> It's important to note that in the study of safeguarding and promotion of the intangible cultural heritage of the people of Tajikistan, put considerable contribution some public organizations, 
including Ilva Ma'orif, Safi, Odam Va'olam, Nuri Umed, Haf Paikar, Raushan, uh, Pamir Mountains, Association of Craftsmen, which are making a significant contribution. The Research Institute of Culture and Information, along with the study and research of art, uh, lib uh, lib library issues, and countries' media, it is engaged also in exploration, documenting, inventory making of intangible cultural heritage in the territory of Tajikistan. Uh, since 2016, the book series on intangible cultural heritage of Tajik people is being published, which reflect the breadth and variety of results of painstaking work of the research members of the Institute of this research institute. So far, nine volumes of this series were published. Uh, you can see the pictures uh, in the screen. Additionally, in collaboration with each cup in 2017, the book album titled Intangible Cultural Heritage in Tajikistan was released. In short, all of these initiatives are targeted to facilitate promotion, preservation, and protection of cultural heritage of the Tajik people. The government of Tajikistan also supports the intangible cultural heritage in the form of celebrations and festivals, as well as special dedicated days like Day of Traditional Music, Shashmakan, Day of Art Music, and etc. Uh, in uh, 2018 was declared as a year of tourism and development and folk crafts in Tajikistan. And after one year, uh, sorry here, I uh, had a miss, short mistake. Uh, in 2019 through 2021, also uh, like a continuation of this um, uh, years of rural development, tourism and folk crafts. So this supports of government uh, helps help uh, to revive many um, folk crafts. Now, uh, some words about uh, festivals. Festivals are capable of demonstration and evolution of cultural traditions, as well as they put a considerable contribution to the development of tourism and local economy. In its broader sense, festivals may refer not to any particular, particular event, but to expressive aspect of all human activity. Festivals provide researchers with rich sources of information about cultures. In many, in many cases, festivals explain and dramatize a cultural mythology, religious, religious beliefs, and symbolic information about the social and cultural worlds. The festivals also demonstrate traditional costumes, food, music, folklore, sport, and games. Uh, the festival have several social and cultural functions due to which are provided their continuity. Hello. 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 
Uh, Mr. Lahimi, uh, can you hear me? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm sorry I'm wondering... for so uh, so yeah. internet connection. Yeah, um, there's some bad connection. Oh, let but me continue. The, yeah, yeah. The, I'm wondering, uh, the, you know, the, the festivals of, oh, has, sorry, have Mr. several social and cultural functions. Uh, uh, Mr. Lahimi? Mr. Lahimi? Da. Yeah, yeah. Can you, the, 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 uh -huh. um, da, da. Can you make uh, some screen sharing um, so that all people um, uh, can see your presentation on the screen? I mean, the touch upon. Um, screen Sorry. sharing. Uh, now it's possible to, to see full full ecran. Okay, now it's uh, okay. Now the our our uh, yeah procedure just only the uh, yeah then you go. Okay, you can do. But yeah, now start now. Uh huh. Uh, the festival. Festivals have several social and cultural functions due to which are provided their continuity. In festivals, a person experiences his or her membership in society and feels the collective solidarity. Festivals also include didactic elements, mainly structuring the young generation in the task of responsibility between other members of the society. They should, they should follow adult people in the performing prescribed social and cultural norms. Uh, uh, festivals, festival also functions on a psychological level. It gives people a sense of national or ethnic identity, builds social integration, solidarity, and makes the friendship atmosphere. Uh, now about popular, oh, sorry. Oh, popular festivals in Tajikistan. There are uh, different festivals in Tajikistan which can be categorized into seasonal, seasonal like Nowruz, Spring Holiday, Mehrgan, Mehrgan, Harvest Festival celebrated in autumn. Sada is the winter festival in January. Oh. Another category is culinary festivals, like uh, Oshipalau National Food Festival of Bread, Festival of Bread, uh, musical festivals, Shashmakan uh, in March, folk music falak, also festivals of folk crafts like Diori Husn. Bozori Hunar, festivals of traditional dresses, Jilvei Chakan, traditional embroidery uh, dresses, Atlas, Chakoi uh, and others. Also, there are folklore festivals uh, like Andaleb, uh, agricultural festivals uh, like Holiday of Honey. Holiday of Honey or Festival of Honey. Uh, oh, hello. Honey, honey. Amita Lahami. Holiday of Melon. Hol holiday of Pumpkin. And some others. Mr. Lahami. Uh. Yeah, um, thank you very much for your, um, so uh, maybe it, uh, we are able to time limitation for next speaker. So can you finalize your um, the presentation within one and uh, 30 minutes? Can you? 
Yeah. Yeah, within within two minutes. Can you complete? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Okay. So uh, there are many motives for participants to attend a festival. First of all, they feel uh, themselves as a member of community or of that society, which is considered main organizers, organizer of the festival. Such people try to put their contribution contributions in planning, arranging, decorating, and controlling activities of the festivals. Uh, the festival have a great contribution to safeguarding the ensuring the vi uh, viability viability of traditional events folklore performance arts knowledge and practices regarding the nature and uh, yeah uh, i had uh, two uh, examples like uh, tradition tradition of uh, cooking sumanak in uh, spring, a traditional sport. So I, uh, I do not uh, in detail to tell you. Thus, ICH festivals are a practical mode of trans transmission of traditional cultural values. Each of festivals are and holidays consist of particular ICH elements which are transmitted along to the festival knowledge and practices from ancient times. Thank you for attention and I'm sorry that... Uh, yeah, thank you very much, um, the Deputy Director Darcio Rahimi, and also um, in particular you um, provide a good information and inspiration how, uh, how much the local community is important when it comes to uh, safeguarding um, the intangible cultural heritage. In particular, I'm much impressed by your comment. Yeah, the festival is the, uh, the um, kind of uh, activities, um, not the, the partially all humans' activities much, much touched upon your uh, comments. Um, I'd like to also the invite uh, Ms. Chinara uh, Bolson Baipu um, on behalf of um, Shabria Sholton Eldeba, um, yeah, Secretary General. Um, now you're on the screen, so. Ms. Chinara Bolson Baipuski? Yeah, yeah, Bolson Baipu. Yeah, also. Um, yeah, also the, I'd like to uh, ask you some, the small, uh, small favor of you. Um, when you see the, your screen, on the bottom line of the screen, you can see the sharing code. So you can push, uh, the touch, touch upon, then the, everybody uh, can see the share the, your code there. Can you? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah starting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me express the sincere gratitude on behalf of the National Commission of the Kyrgyz Republic for UNESCO to the ICHCAP and the participants of this uh, webinar. And I'm uh, glad uh, today to present about this uh, presentation about the ICH festivals in the Kyrgyz Republic and its influences and effects uh, on local communities. So um, today, in, the, in today's presentation, I will uh, talk about the ICH festivals in the Kyrgyz Republic, and of course, there are a lot. But uh, for to present, uh, uh, um, I've chosen uh, two uh, festivals, um, which are the festival Kyrgyz Shurdagu and Nomad Games. Um, these two presentations are great examples to illustrate the community participations as well as safeguarding and transmission of the ICH elements. And of course, the main subject of uh, this presentation, the influences and effects of this uh, uh, festival, Kyrgyz Shirdagu and Nomad Games uh, on uh, local communities' uh, well-being. So uh, generally talking, uh, ICH, uh, intangible cultural heritage of uh, the Kyrgyz people are determined by the nomadic lifestyle and rich cultural heritage. 
and embraces, uh, therefore, the Kyrgyz people embraces all ICH um, domains, which are um, uh, performing arts, social practices, ritual and festive events, knowledge and practices concerning the nature and the universe and traditional craftsmanship. And accordingly, all the ICH festivals uh, features uh, the crafts, uh, folklore, uh, traditional uh, horse games, uh, um, felt, uh, hunting with the birds, uh, and all these ICH festivals are uh, launched uh, with the aim of safeguarding and transmission of the ICH elements of the Kyrgyz people. For example, we have uh, you know, specific festivals uh, dedicated for the safeguarding and transmission of the ICH. Uh, uh, for example, traditional felt carpets. Uh, we have a festivals like uh, Oimo International Festival or the Kyrgyz Shridaga, which I will talk later on, uh, for the safeguarding of the traditional felt carpets. And we have also the special um, the festivals like um, World Epic Festivals for the safeguarding and transmission of the oral tradition or the art of the improvisation or many other uh, festivals. Um, uh, that reflect the traditional folklore, um, traditional games, uh, culture, and customs of the Kyrgyz people. And the government of the Kyrgyz Republic um, uh, is making a great effort uh, in safeguarding and transmission of the ICH uh, after the ratification of the 2003 Convention of UNESCO 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage in 2006 uh, the the government of the Kyrgyz Republic uh, launched the national program for the safeguarding promoting and popularization of the ICH in Kyrgyzstan as well as um, Kyrgyz Republic adopted the law for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage in 2012. We also have the specific department uh, internet, uh, for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage um, under the Minister of Culture and Tourism and Information of the Kyrgyz Republic. Um, but uh, needless to say, in Kyrgyzstan, the communities, the concerned communities, the barriers and practitioners of the ICH elements are very active in safeguarding and promoting the ICH by themselves. So basically, it's the approach. And these all ICH festivals mostly are organized by the initiative of the barriers and practitioners themselves. So, um, uh, the ICH festivals in Kyrgyzstan are conducted on multiple scales, which are on local, national, and international levels, with the support of the uh, um, local and national uh, administrations, as well as uh, with the in partnership of uh, in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Culture of the Kyrgyz Republic. So, um, accordingly, the festivals um, have uh, the great contribution to concerned communities in safeguarding and transmission of the ICH, um, the popularization and visibility of ICH elements among the general public as well as among the youth, and um, also the establishment of the networks not only on local or national level but also on the sub-regional or regional levels as well as uh, the um, well-being of the uh, 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 to the local communities so um so to to illustrate uh, the um, ICH uh, festivals in the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, so I've chosen to, pre to present about the Kyrgyz Shirdaga and later on on Nomad Games. Um, uh, these festivals uh, 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 started uh, for the revival of the ICH in the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, so basically, after the independence in 1991, the local communities and concerned uh, uh, concerned communities uh, across the country uh, started working on revitalizing and celebrating their traditional culture. So uh, they started to building connection across the country and identified many challenges on safeguarding and transmission of the ICH. So uh, basically, um, uh, one of them were the the loss of the uh, traditional uh, knowledge and skills of ICH elements. And the other one was uh, the lack of interest among the younger generation. So um, the, Kyrgyz, the festival is Kyrgyz Shirdaka is basically a very good example to illustrate uh, 
uh, for after the gaining independence, the traditional felt culprit were under uh, under the serious threat of being lost. And by the initiative of the barriers and practitioners themselves, it was the element was inscribed on the list of ICH in need of urgent safeguarding in 2012. At that point, uh, the craftspeople across the country, they um, um, established the, the crafts union of the Kyrgyz people, of the Kyrgyz Republic, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, this union uh, basically is an association of crafts uh, people across the country, the purpose of which is to safeguard and further develop the handicraft. Later on, uh, they started to launch the different festivals dedicated to the safeguarding of the traditional felt carpet or the handicraft. Um, one of them is the Kyrgyz Shurdagı, which is held uh, annually in Narun region uh, with the participation of the all crafts uh, person uh, of, in all regions of the country. And the main purpose of this festival is to popularize cra uh, craft and art. Uh, as well as to support the um, barriers and practitioners of the element. Basically, uh, within uh, the framework of this festival, different fairs, uh, markets, uh, exhibitions are held, and th this festival is highly attracted by tourists. So, um, as a result uh, of this festival, uh, the quality and design of the traditional felt carpet have been improved and the growing interest among the general public as, as, uh, as well as the youth uh, have been increased not only on buying the felt products but also in manufacturing the felt products. Uh, and uh, of course, the development and marketing and tourism, uh, for example, the interest of tourists in buying felt products and uh, the, uh, the felt products is uh, developing, the export of the uh, felt products is um, developing every year. So uh, here, I've, uh, the, the, the diagram uh, illustrates uh, the effect of the festivals and master classes for the felt product sales only in one region uh, within the period of 2012 and 2019 in Isukul region. And you can see how the, 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 the product sell, uh, felt product sales have been increasing year by year. Uh, so the other example is uh, the um, uh, Nomad Games. Uh, uh, this uh, festival also started by the initiative of the traditional game practitioners and barriers. And uh, uh, well, actually, the, 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 the Nomad Game Festival started on the provisional, provisional level uh, and uh, it conducted all in all seven regions of the country. Uh, 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 it started uh, to share the results of the documentation that are held uh, to raise the general public's awareness. So the traditional uh, game uh, barriers uh, started um, uh, started the documentation process, and as a result, 120 traditional games were identified with the 375 original varieties and techniques and uh, with, the, uh, with the same game. So accordingly, uh, these uh, game rules and techniques have been uh, documented and invented. So uh, for to share the results of this documentation with the general public, the Nomad Games of, at the national level have been launched uh, just to share the learn, uh, just to share the results. Uh, and the, the the festival consists of mm -hmm. three elements, uh, which are the mm -hmm. learning workshops, uh, uh, presentations, yes, and um, uh, mm -hmm. Ms. game Olsen competitions. Can you hear yes. me? Yeah. 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 Um, I think your time's almost done, so maybe I'll give you two minutes more. So within two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, uh, yeah. I will. I'll, I will shorten. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, as a result of the Nomad Games, uh, the um, it, uh, as a result of the National Nomad Games, uh, the safeguarding and transmission have been increased. For example, you can see the number of uh, practitioners arose, as well as the strengthening link between uh, the uh, between the other uh, ICH elements, because the National Nomad Games have uh, give gives a um, great platform not only for the traditional game practitioners but also to other uh, intangible uh, cultural heritage uh, barriers. Uh, 
because there are a lot of uh, fairs uh, and uh, markets, uh, concerts and performance are held. And it's, it also fostered the revival, uh, uh, the, the revival of the ICH um, uh, uh, crafts persons. Uh, uh, they started to making the yurts, for example, the traditional headdresses uh, like akalpak and elecek, and it all it, they all lead to the economic benefits. And as a result of the uh, nomad game, national nomad games, uh, the world nomads game have been launched in 2012 with the uh, together with the concerned communities and the government of the Kyrgyz Republic. So uh, the world nomad games is the biggest project. Um, and it was held three times already in 14, 16, and 18 in the Sikul region. And uh, the number of participants uh, at, uh, to participate in the World Nomad Games have been increasing year by year. For example, in 2014, only 62 countries participated, and in 2018, there were uh, 77. And uh, the VNG, the World Nomad Game, has fostered, of course, the safeguarding popularization and also it supported the uh, different scientific and research works uh, because as a result of the World Nomad Games, uh, there was different uh, uh, researches and scientific uh, works have been done. Also, uh, the, it strengthened the international uh, intercultural dialogue and cooperation around the world. And the result of the VNG is the contribution to the science and cultural heritage and networks. Uh, different networks have been established by the barriers and practitioners. For example, Salburun Federation is the 17 countries, Kukburu Federation in 10 countries, and Aitish in 62 countries. It also um, got an attention from the white media, for example, and then it, it uh, increased the, the, the public awareness, uh, especially among the youth. Uh, you can see the, the hashtags and publication on Instagram and uh, in Facebook, like in social media, there are a lot of publications dedicated to the World Nomad Games, as well as uh, to notice the World Nomad Games website has been visited 32 times by the 2018. So uh, the, as a result of the Nomad Games, um, many tourists are attracted, started to be attracted in Kyrgyzstan, uh, boost to eco local economy, and of course uh, it all, it led to the uh, the, the well-being and uh, the livelihood of the uh, concerned communities. As a result, as a conclusion, I want to say that these all ICH festivals uh, have an effective uh, are very effective in safeguarding the ICH and contributing to the livelihood of the local communities, uh, as well as uh, the establishment of the networks and. Um, uh, um, establishment of the networks, raising the awareness, and then, of course, the well-being of the concerned communities. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Ms. Bolsonbaev. Um, you the highlight and also very explained uh, your the uh, facilitation effort to um, develop continuously the ICH um, the content and also in particular uh, through in particular I, I, I am very much impressed by the ICH elements and also the uh, various festival including the nomad game um, in the end I certainly believe that the uh, brand the brand the value of brand is now going up and also uh, external attention also is getting increased uh, really um, uh, appreciate you um, at this time, I'd like to invite um, the next speaker, specialist, Mr. Kuljak uh, Nokerbeck. Um, uh, I'd like to invite you. Um, you are now, it's now your turn uh, on, the, on the title of ICH Festivals, Influence and Effect um, on Local Communities. Can you hear me? Mr. Nokerbeck? Uh, this is Sung. I'm the moderator, uh, Mr. Nokerbeck. You are ready? Uh, 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 yes, yes, I'm ready. I want to ask you, um, can you okay, sorry, uh, add the Ms. Hamza Daisyanova now? At first, okay. she wants to say some words, and after, I will read the report. Mm. Thank you. 
Uh-huh. Dear Mr. Kim Chin Yun, oh. dear Mr. Dmitry Vayakin, uh, how are you? dear uh, yeah. Mrs. Chung Chai Suk, uh. dear participants, uh. ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends whom I am happy to see here. First of all, let me welcome everybody and express thanks to organizers UNESCO, ICAP, and ICAS for this opportunity to discuss the important role which intangible natural heritage plays in everyday life and festive events of the local communities at the Great Silk Road. For the benefit of our mortal understand, I ask Gulza, my assistant, to read all the text of my intervention. She has much better pronunciation. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes at uh, around eight. You are now, the time is left around eight minutes. So uh, maybe you can finish your uh, presentation um, by um, 3.50. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cultural heritage continues to be deeply tied to perceptions about nationhood, authenticity, and deep, enduring roots that we developed during the two recent centuries. Whether being classified as tangible or intangible heritage or natural heritage, it has become a major cultural resource and pillar of sustainable development. Uh, several nation states have adopted measures to promote uh, the maintenance of rituals and various bodies of knowledge, occupational skills, and art that are transmitted orally by gesture or by examples. And there is a strong competition to have elements of the national uh, ICH nominated on UNESCO's representative list. Uh, there is also strong interweaving between the tangible and intangible. The intangibility of cultural heritage is articulated through the materiality of culture. In paradox, the tangible can only be understood and interpreted through the tangible. Um, <clears throat> in our first overlook of the interviewed group of ICH related groups in selected provinces of Kazakhstan, almost 52% of the local ICH listed events have been established less than in three years, and 44.4% were functioning about five, seven years. Uh, today, the viability and sustainability of the ICH depends largely on financial resources to support it. 37 and 2 percent of the local festive events were supported by the local authorities from the municipal budget. 23.3 percent received support from the cultural centers and 14 percent from public associations. Uh, some festivals follow traditional uh, art performance like Yiryevige Novaylodevrni Zhrlara National Festival, which promotes revival and development of the unique art Zhrsha Zhrau. Oludala and Minzhra Akandarni Zhikatara is a national contest of oral folk poetry and song and Zhbek Zhala singers competition. Popular contests such as Zhan Zirigam Dombra of traditional singers Zhrsha Zhrau, a national competition of Traditional songs, Jodzudzik Pizek, Music Festival, and Rasrlar Anna Festival, Forest and Decay attract participations and visitors from the whole country. In Kostanai City, the Destor International Festival tries to link ancient art technologies to the modern cultural communication. Uh, in Kazakhstan, the national museums have a long history of promotion of the crafts fairs. For a decade since 1997, this was a single annual crafts fair under ethnomusiology supervision. However, in 2010-2020, uh, the numerous irregular events appeared in various provinces. trade fair of national cousin and closing in conducted Aktobe. Oludala Kushpendler Alema Festival is conducted near B. Almaty city at the cultural heritage site of Baraldai Sachs uh, Bureau Mounds. 
um, the site location is <clears throat> the site location is very close to Isik, where the famous golden men have been found. Lutarzam and go from Lutau International Ethnographic Festival, which refers to the ancient traditional knowledge of nomads. Uh, the sport uh, and national games festive event are considered uh, to be the most effective and attractive. The revival um, of tradition facilitated the establishment of the national sports festival on Kazakh Kresen, which is very popular at all areas and provinces and hunting with Burkut and Tazu. Uh, one more type of ICH related festive events, which is not explored in Kazakhstan, should be mentioned. Please. Uh, places of worship have impact on sacred and secular visitors and sub, uh, supplement other existing man-made and natural tourism products and services provided at destination. Finally, it is important to mention new type of Kazakhstan specific events which are oriented at social network platforms, uh, like the spirit of Tengri. Uh, the Spirit of Tsengri is the largest festival of contemporary ethnic music in Central Asia and is one of the most prominent international cultural projects, not only in Kazakhstan, but also in the countries of Central Asia. Over the years, the project has been attended by teams and performers from uh, 80 countries and regions of the world. Uh, the project has been recognized in the global music and gave some uh, fame abroad. The spirit of Tengri presents its members at the Wimax International Music Forum. This is the first Kazakh project that is presented on this international platform. The second festive event is Toy Kazan. Toy Kazan is an encating celebration of the national cousin of the people of Kazakhstan. Based on the idea of friendship and brotherhood, all the ethnic groups living in the country, the festival targets active users of the social networks, bloggers, social activities, their families, friends, and colleagues. The organizers have a good link to global social media and the total information coverage of post releases about the festival held in 2013-2019 uh, uh, amounted about uh, 280 million people. The involvement of the intangible cultural heritage of individual regions countries and areas in the industry of tourist services remain relevant. But the tangible and intangible cultural heritage will play an increasingly important role in the contemporary information society and is an area of human life that preserves memory, which will more often attract the attention of local population and the tourism industry and be the object of the promising investments. Kazakhstan has adequate uh, prerequisites pre from promoting an intangible cultural heritage. The Ichkap new initiative of bringing the modern IT technologies in presenting the rich diversity of cultures Asia Pacific will provide an excellent opportunity to do, demonstrate and promote folk art, goods and services, promote and develop historical and cultural values. It will strengthen intercultural dialogue trans-ethnic communication and ensure the transmission of the people's cultural significance to the level of the international community. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Specialist Guljak Nokerebek. Um, through your presentation, we are well aware of the Kazakhstan's effort um, how the Kazakhstan is the, the, the maker effort to facilitate um, the development of uh, an unchangeable, no, the, the intangible cultural heritage. And also, the, um, we are also very much interested in your, the, your, the very variety of the festivals like uh, Jubano uh, Ritaro and also the, the other the regional, um, yeah, the Jabek. Julie, uh, seeing us festival, you just showed me um, the, through, the, through the screen. And also, um, in the end, I believe the, uh, this kind of uh, um, the long known effort, outstanding effort, uh, this kind of festival will be developed into the uh, global of, yeah, the festival, uh, the worldwide that the, all people can could enjoy. Again, thank you very much for your uh, intervention here. And also, um, I'd like to invite our um, mm, yeah, the, um, Andong Mask Dance Festival Chief, um, the director Kim Ju Ho, 
Um, in terms of uh, the yeah, stream uh, shaving our times, uh, I'd like to um, yeah, um, omit some introduction of the director Kim. But but anyway, he's like has a great influence on the um, the, uh, the, the uh, retribution uh, dissemination of the Andong uh, Dance Festival towards the in particular internationalization. Okay, let me introduce the Mr. Uh, uh, Kim Jo Kim Jo Timjangnim. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as introduced, uh, I am Ju Kim, and I'm the head of the festival festival team of the Andong Festival Tourism Foundation. And it's a great honor for me to be here today. I would like to talk about what kind of um, festivities and festivals impact uh, the local community. We heard about the cases from Central Asia, but I would like to now bring it to Korea, especially the Andong Mask Dance Festival, and how that actually impacts the transmission of intangible heritage. Well, first, let me give you some more information on the region Andong, where this Mask Dance Festival takes place. Andong has to do with a, let's say, a comfortable drive. So an means safe and comfortable, and dong means dynamics or drive. So you can see that it's here, located here, and you can see the distance from Seoul. And it has the third largest uh, uh, region or administrative region in Korea. It has been impacted by the region and as throughout the eras, but you can see that in terms of uh, in terms of religion, in terms of culture, Andong was able to preserve its very balanced state. So in terms of the folklore, you can see that we also see confusion as well as Buddhism. And in addition to that, Andong is also very well known for its many cultural heritages. So many people also uh, tout uh, Andong as uh, the capital of the Korean spirit. I'll have to go into some of the world's heritage cities. The Andong Hawe village in 2010 was uh, designated as a world uh, heritage. And you can see that the, the Bongjongsa Temple in 2018 and the Pyeongsan Confucian Academy in 2019 and Tusan Confucian Academy in 2019 it was designated as the heritage. And in 2015, the, you can see that there was also the manuscripts. And also in 2016, there were also additional uh, designations. Um, and these designations locate, are located in Andong. When you think of cultural heritage, you may think that it's something that was actually cherished by the higher class. But you can see that for Handong, we also have the Hawe Pyeongsanggu Tal Luri, which is an intangible cultural heritage. And this actually has to do with coexistence of the Taedong world, where the noble and the middle and low class are together in harmony. So this mask dance in 1997, uh, the Andong Mask Dance Festival came into its being. So if I may go into some of the contents, I would like to cover today. I want to first focus on how we've been able to realize folk values and transmit intangible heritage through this Mass Dance Festival. So my first uh, background would have to go into the contents of the festival and the birth of the festival. And the second part has to do with what kind of uh, folk values and how we were able to transmit intangible cultural heritage and create that Taedong world. And I believe that uh, this conference is online because of COVID-19. And if you look at the festival, it, of course, is impacted greatly by COVID. And you can see that there are a lot of untacked uh, or virtual meetings in place. So in the post-COVID world, what kind of festivals, uh, what kind of form should these festivals take? I would like to also talk about that in the latter part of my presentation. Here you can see that mask and mask dance are universal and it's basically the general culture of mankind. Wherever you go, you can see masks and also the mask dance. It exists in all countries around the world. So through the mask and mask dance, they've tried to re uh, realize a free and equal society. Once you have the mask on, anytime you would be free from any judgment. And in addition to that, you can express uh, what you want to express. And with the mask, uh, despite of the social class and gender, uh, you are not discriminated. It enables an equal society. In Andong from 800 years ago, there is the Hawe Pyeongsanggu Taluri uh, that's been transmitted. And this Hawe Pyeongsanggu Taluri, you can see that it has Kang Wu and Songshin, which includes again 
as well as ritual, as well as festivities all included. So all of the values of the mask and mask dance and the history of Andong and the cultural value of Andong have been brought together to create this mask dance festival. Uh, from for 10 days at the um, end of September, we have more than a million people coming to watch the Mass Dance Festival. It's now truly a flagship festival in Korea. And this Andong Mass Dance Festival has led to enhancing um, the image of Hawe Village. Many of the VIPs would, of course, visit to the Hawe Village. In 1999, Queen Elizabeth uh, and uh, President Bush, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and even President Moon Ji-un all visited the Hawe Village, and they also saw the mass dance performance. And this uh, mass dance festival takes place on a Friday, the last Friday of September for 10 days. Uh, you can see that it takes part in the Bass Dance Park in Hawaii Folk Village all around Andong. Some of the event programs include performances by international and Korean associations. And along with the Andong Folk Festival, uh, there are a myriad of programs. We also have mass exhibitions as well as experience programs. And there are many uh, of these experience programs that are very well received. So anybody can actually participate and enjoy this festival. And particularly, you can see that this festival is not only about tradition, it's about modernity and uh, the tradition coming together, and it's also about creating a new culture. If you look at these mass dance festivals and competitions, there's also these various performances that are brought together, both home and abroad. There are these collaborations that use a tradition as a motive, but there are also many attempts uh, that are encouraged. So then, what kind of value does this festival have? Let me give you some more information on that. You can see that everything has the six W's, but especially the Y is a particular element that we have to go into. It has to do with the reason behind the existence of such festivals. You can see that once again, it's about creating a Taedong world, an equal world. The basic uh, fundamental of uh, the festival has to do with taking place in a well, non-ordinary situation. This actually has to do with strengthening the relationship between the Yangban, the noble class, and the Pyeongmin, the middle and low class, which is quite abnormal if you look at their everyday life. So the lower class can actually exude their frustrations, and the noble class, with the satirism, they can understand what kind of situations they are in to reduce social turmoil as well as resistance. In other words, it's about communications and coexistence between the two classes and have them be brought together through the mass death festival to create a Taedong world or an equal world. And we also have a uh, civil uh, and a Taedong uh, festival where everybody comes together with their masks and with the mask dance, everybody can work in harmony. Of course, we may have different languages, but with the dances, you can actually in relate with one another and you can create an equal society. So it has a fundamental function of equality. And if you look at the mask dance, it's also about transmitting this intangible cultural heritage. In Korea, uh, we have associations that have been designated as a national intangible cultural property. And you can see that these associations and other various organizations come together uh, to transmit this knowledge and culture. So you can see that through this folk festival, uh, we see a growth, a development of the intangible cultural heritage. In 2022, uh, it's uh, preparing to become an UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. So we're thinking about the nomination. Andong has, of course, many heritages. But if it does become an intangible cultural heritage, uh, it can actually be uh, have a designation on all three fronts of the heritage list of UNESCO. And I think that that would be uh, a pivotal or milestone event if it does happen. Recently, due to COVID-19, Andong Mask Dance Festival could not take place this year. You can see that with this flagship festival not being able to be put on stage, of course, relevant other local festivals all could not and had to be delayed. COVID-19 is something that cannot be uh, anticipated. And some do say that we cannot go back to the pre-COVID years. However, of course, we need to find a way to respond accordingly to the post-COVID world. Many people have been focusing on the non-face-to-face -face festivals, online festivals, or only receiving limited reservations to have just a limited number of participants. So these may be some alternatives. There may be SNS as well as uh, real live streaming. 
and archiving can also be a way to uh, have people enjoy these festivals. These festivals as once uh, as about bringing people together, but in the untapped world, we really need to put together uh, the right methodology to engage ourselves in these festivals. I hope that we can have some further discussions and debate on this. But I would like to say that this is not a challenge just for Korea. It's about um, it's a challenge for the international community. Festival has a limited possibilities, and it also enhances vitality. So once again, it's a common challenge for all. And last but not least, I do have a two-minute video, and let me just end with that. Thank you. The tradition of praying to the gods has been long cherished among Koreans. Dancing with a mask on is one of the favorite forms of this practice. Korean mask dance has now become a festival that unites the world's people as one. Various masks are brought together to form a mosaic of unique colors. The city throbs with pulsating music and dancing. And competitions are held in hopes of bringing prosperity and a good harvest. People create memories while making their own masks. And the growing intensity and excitement of the performances brings everyone together. The beautiful flowers drop and fall. Colorful fireworks embroider the night sky. Wearing masks. Performing dances. Praying for luck. A place full of joy. If you are ready, will you join us? Let me conclude my presentation. Thank, Thank you, very you much. so much, uh, Director Kim Ju Ho. Um, yes, indeed, um, I certainly believe Andong Mask Festival is now the um, most representative, the best, uh, one of the best. Uh, representative festival in Korea, and also um, Dr. Kim, uh, the director Kim also well introduced now the um, the mask festival is now earmarking as a representative content which could introduce Korean culture to overseas countries. Uh, I certainly believe that the kind of behind the rational um, the uh, realization of potential its potential uh, is. It, possible because of the devotion and passion of the uh, local community. In particular, it is much also that I'm also impressed by the, the, their wish, um, the, the registration UNESCO in um, tangible cultural heritage UNESCO. Um, yeah, I, I think you, you, I, I believe your dream will come true. And also the, your video footage on the mask uh, festival also um, very um, the, the, yeah, impressive and interesting. Uh, thank you much, uh, very much. Uh, also, the time has come. Um, the, yeah, it's already our last speaker here. Um, yeah, the, our the last but the least, uh, I'd like to introduce our final speaker, uh, Ambassador Shohat Jumayepu. Um, yeah. Are you ready, Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador? Now, um, the you are you are, you are now, yeah yeah you are you are now the uh, make a presentation on the future of Turkmenistan and ICH. Thank you for your joining us here. 
thank you much, uh, morning, everybody. Here in Paris is early morning. For that reason, I am addressing you with uh, good morning. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to you for delivering me the floor and this opportunity to have a speech. I am confident that this webinar will play an, an important role in the extensive research of, uh, of the history of the road and become an uh, effective platform to define its present and future development. Dear colleagues, excellencies, the crystal road, uh, whose history extends back thousands of years, holds a, a prominent place in the history of Disconnect, disconnect. Um, yeah, yeah, connect again. Um, now the, the um, our connection is bad at this time. So for time being, um, the yeah, the shortly will be disconnected. So why don't you stay here? Um, or sooner or later, yeah, our line will be connected soon. We are very sorry to you uh, to, to disrupt you. Um, the line is now on the process of the connecting. Is already. Mm. Okay. So I think um, it will take a, a little more time to totally restore to the like, regular session. So, uh, in terms of uh, um, yeah, utilizing our time here. Uh, let me shortly um, some yeah review the the, the, the questions uh, through YouTube. Sorry, sorry, we had some pro technical problems here in Paris. Oh uh, yeah, you are, you are, you are, you can come back. Can you hear me, Ambassador? Mr. Ambassador? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Keep going on. Yep. Uh, dear colleagues, excellencies, uh, the, the, the Great Silk Roads, whose history extends the back of uh, thousands of... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the green, uh, dear colleagues, uh, the Great Silk Road, whose history extends back thousands of years, holds a prominent place in the history of humanity. By promoting of the development of friendly relations between the peoples of the world and strengthening links and cooperation between merchants, this road uh, united many different peoples in ancient times. Old forts, caravan, uh, caravan cities, uh, historical and cultural monuments keep the glorious chapter of the history of this caravan route. The Great Silk Route today is more than a traffic route between certain geographic locations. It takes on an important political, humanitarian, uh, philosophical dimension. Uh, throughout many cent uh, centuries, the territory of Turkmenistan served as a cross crossroad uh, of Eurasian routes, the meeting point for cultural cultures, cultures and civilizations customs and uh, traditions. And today, the, at the new phase, uh, phase of uh, history, we review timeless value, values of the Silk Road and do, uh, and do this uh, together with our friends all over the world. Major works uh, the, uh, that are carried out to research and promote the historical importance of the Great Silk Road become a true, a true manifestation of friendship, humanism, and good neighbor, neighboringness. Now, uh, nowadays, Turkmenistan uh, pays special attention to the popularization of the uh, phenomenon of the Great Silk Road as a factor connecting the nations and cultures. The subject uh, was uh, comprehensively re uh, revealed 
in the book of the of the president of Turkmenistan titled uh, Turkmenistan heard heard of the Great Silk Road, based on the facts of the national history extracts from the ancient legends and stories and modern events uh, in the country. One of the priority topics of, of the international agenda of Turkmenistan in regard uh, to the implementation of the uh, UN Agenda 2030 is uh, the cooperation of our country with the UNESCO. I would like to note that in the result of joint work with, it, with the UNESCO structures, and its experts be attained uh, visible outcomes. It is important uh, to underli underline recent online meeting uh, of His Excellency Mr. Rashid Meredov, Deputy Chairman of the Cabinet Ministers, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkmenistan with Your Excellency Madame Rodri Azulay, Director General of UNESCO, where the parties have discussed the wide spectrum of spheres of cooperation between Turkmenistan and UNESCO. Today, the cultural Monuments such as uh, ancient mayor Konur Genç, uh, Parthian fortress of Nisa, epic art of Turkmen people Gorolli, Turkmen national art of uh, signing and dancing Kushtekti, as well as the Turkmen uh, traditional art of carpet making are inscribed in, in the list of uh, world uh, cultural heritage of UNESCO. We are intending to continue further uh, the implementation of the cooperation potential with, with UNESCO. Taking this opportunity, I would like to mention that the territory of Turkmenistan is still rich in monuments, which is rich in antiquity, where, where the most considerable places of the Great Silk Road. They are, they are the magnificent and unique architect, architectural masterpiece of the past. In, in epoch of, of the Silk Road that uh, uh, lasted for the 10th, 15th centuries left, thousands of monuments along its road from the Mediterranean to Far East. Uh, many of them are located in Turkmenistan. It was the time when such cities like Merv, Gönörgenç, Amul, Zem, Seras, Abivet, uh, Nisa, and Dagestan appeared and uh, turned into real medieval agglomerations. Under the leadership of the president of Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan pays great attention on the study and safety of historical monuments located along the Great Silk Road and the cultural heritage of the people through identification, collection, and promotion of national values. Today, uh, the specialist of the National Department for Protection of the Minister of Culture of Turkmenistan study and continue restoration work of, of historical and cultural monuments of Turkmenistan. Also, they are, they are working with their colleagues from the other countries and, uh, and uh, uh, they are UNESCO expert on the inclusion of the part of the Silk Road on the territory of Turkmenistan to the World Heritage List under serial nomination. Uh, I would like to highlight that field meeting of the coordinating committee on the World Heritage Serial nomination of the Silk Roads of UNESCO was organized on uh, 4 and 5 December 2018 in Ashgabat, where the participants, including national focal points and experts from uh, 13 UNESCO member states, realized a list of decisions for further activities to preserve and manage the heritage uh, uh, sites along the Silk Roads. The Ashgabat decision included a further strengthening the collaboration, collaboration between uh, the member states on diverse projects related to World Heritage nomination on, on the, of the Silk Roads. Also, I, I want to inform that uh, that works uh, is underway on preparation of nomination dossier Silk Road Zaravshan Karakum Corridor for inclusion to the UNESCO World Heritage List. I would like on this occasion to thank the International Institute for Central Asian uh, Studies for supporting and coordinating the above mentioned uh, nomination. As is known, Ahalteke horses and alibi dogs are the loyal friends and faithful companions of Turkmen, uh, of Turkmen uh, throughout centuries of the history. They are an integral part of the intangible, intangible cultural heritage along the Great Silk Road. The preservation and the popularization of Ahalteke horses and 
one of the oldest dogs uh, breeds Alaba is important in order to protecting uh, protecting the world uh, cultural heritage. In this regard, Turkmenistan is current is currently actively working to include in near future the nomination art of Alteka horse breeding and specifics of the selection of the Turkmen Alaba into into the UNESCO intangible intangible culture, uh, cultural heritage list. Dear colleagues, uh, excellencies, in, in conclusion of my speech, I would like to thank once again for the opportunity to have a speech. I wish to all participants of the webinar good health and success, peace and prosperity of the peoples of your countries. Let me let me now to, to show a short video prepared by Turkmen side dedicated to, to our future nominations which are which are, which are the Turkmen side proposals to inscribe into the UNESCO intangible cultural heritage list. Thank you for your attention. I think our colleague uh, from the Korea will help us to to start our short video if it possible. The octagonal star of Oghut Khan also has a deep meaning in the selection of a beautiful image of a horse as the center of the sacred symbol of our people that imbue the national pride and accomplishments of independent, permanently neutral Turkmenistan. State symbols are the face of the state, the heart of the people, the spiritual world of the nation. Today, in the prosperous epoch of the powerful state, the inspired Turkmen people have turned the image of their national pride, the Haltekya horse, into the splendid decoration of the state flag. In the prosperous epoch of the powerful state, thanks to the personal efforts of our national leader, the increase of the number of pure-blooded Akhaltekya horses doing scientific work by the scientists on the uniqueness of natural colors and the origin of horses as well as creation of favorable conditions for promotion of equestrian traditions have become one of the priorities of state policy. Our winged horses have remained to be a historic miracle in the national and world culture have turned into a symbol of the success of our country, a symbol of the realized dreams of our ancestors. Development of Akhaltekya horse breeding has been brought to the forefront of state policy in Turkmenistan. In 2010, on the initiative of the Turkmen leader, the International Akhaltekya Equestrian Association headquartered in Ashgabat was established. In the past few years, it has become a reputable organization that includes the number of equestrian enterprises engaged in the breeding of pure-blooded Akhaltekya horses training of high-speed riders for equestrian sports as well as the increase in the number of scientific hippologists and other specialists. Today, the association includes legal and private members from more than 30 countries around the world. The state policy of horse breeding in Turkmenistan pursued under the leadership of the esteemed president is aimed at creation of favorable conditions for efficient development of horse breeding. First of all, preservation of poor bred Akhaltekya horse as a wonderful miracle of the world culture. Rare and unique features of Akhaltekya have been preserved for many centuries. Natural and geographic features as well as skills of the Turkmen people conditioned the creation of such a unique breed. It deserves a lot of attention of not only historians but also horse breeders and selectionist scientists. The world important events happened in the historical homeland of Akhaltekya horses contributes to the further enhancement of prestige of Akhaltekya horses and the widespread of national equestrian traditions around the world. This is another proof that the values created by our wise forefathers are being perpetuated. Turkmen alibis have been recognized as very intelligent, extremely brave dogs. They are also considered to be very sensitive, watchful and especially unique in terms of protection. They develop the ability to get used to the owner, adapt to them and become people's closest companions. This means that the alibi are in favor of good, as our national leader says. Turkmen alibi feel free, therefore it is not easy to give up any of its habit. They look at strangers with suspicion. They have more aggressive attitude to other dogs. The attitude of alibi to the family members is, however, pleasant. They become more affectionate with the children of this house. In the absence of parents, alibi takes care of the children, does not be separated from as it has been taught. As it is known, for many years, esteemed President Gurwang Liberdam Mohamedov has attached great importance to the collection of information on the history of alibi dogs to effective excavations in the areas of Jaitun, Altindepe, and Marush. 
which are considered to be the ancient sites in the country. Thanks to the efforts of the estimate president, the Institute of Manuscripts was established in Turkmenistan and its scholars have gathered a collection of historical information and manuscripts related to national values created by our people. During the course of research, along with other valuable information related to the history of Alabai dog's breed, is constantly being discovered. The discovery of dog tombs during these excavations in Marush means that the ancient Turkmen Alabai played a special role in the protection of the people's prosperity and state borders. The date of creation of the clay state of the alibi found in Altindepe dates back to the BC times. The fact that the site of the dog bones found during the excavations corresponds to the body structure of the Turkmen alibi indicates that the breed of these dogs are very ancient. This year, the Turkmen Alibi Dog Association has been established. The establishment of this association is based on the task set by the estimate President Khurwan Albert Mohamedov to pass on to the next generation to the best traditions of National School of Sinology and continuously register and increase the number of alibi dogs by using the popular elections, methods and modern achievements of world science. Alibi has successfully passed the centuries-old test of life. Therefore, establishment of the Turkmen Alibi Dogs Association will greatly contribute to the wealthy continuation of its history historical pedigree in the new era. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ambassador Shoa Tuchumayev. And also, the, um, you duly highlight that Turkmenistan uh, pay great attention to the, um, the, the, the phenomenon of popularization, um, great Silk Road popularization phenomenon. Um, and also, the, um, your um, government, the engaged the policy, um, the including UNESCO. I mean, the, the including the nomination dossier, uh, and also the last video footage on the horse breeding and also beauty of Turkmenistan. Really, it's very the, the we well um, the uh, yeah well, wearable the beauty of the Turkmenistan here. Um, again, thank you very much. And also, yeah, we have another, um, maybe I think 18, 17 or 18 minutes are left here. It's time for a panel um, um, the discussion. In advance of the, uh, jumping uh, into the panel discussion, I shortly uh, sum up the today's discussion uh, because the, the, no, normally, the, and, and after that, um, we need to respond to the, uh, the, the couple of questions which has been raised through the YouTube. Um, I understand now today the for today five speakers they um, commonly address the uh, in, uh, intangible uh, cultural heritage of festival influence and effect on local community. Uh, in particular, the in company local communities in the uh, safeguarding of local community is very uh, the um, uh, the safeguarding of um, uh, the local um, yeah the intangible cultural heritage is very important and also the ICH festival uh, a key festival a key um, cultural um, the event for um, celebrating world. ICH and also have a, had a very positive effect on the economic, tourism, and also social cultural sectors of those local um, governments hosting them. And also today, the, um, I think um, today, um, you five speakers, you um, answer to the fundamental questions: Why community uh, participation in safeguarding intangible cultural heritage is important? Because you answered, communities play a, 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 a important role in production, safeguarding, and also the maintenance and recreation of the ICHM. And also, um, then you also raised the question, how to strengthen the role of uh, communities? You also answered, the communities groups and also individuals concerned should be encouraged to help them safeguard their in uh, yeah, the tangible cultural heritage. Uh, I really appreciate um, your participation here. And also, um, we may have some couple of questions, but in, uh, in advance of uh, jumping into the, the other the, um, the, the, the questions raised by the YouTube, uh, our leader, I also would like to, to make a small question to, to, to all of you, um, because now, um, of course, local communities' engagement is very important. However, um, 
the, in order to encourage local communities uh, um, engagement in, in cultural heritage, there might be some tasks or um, some challenges. Um, for example, how to raise uh, awareness of um, the, those issues and also how to set priorities and or draw attention and also um, the <coughs> said central government, how to get over dependency for um, financial support, how to build his strategic relationship and partnership with international um, the, the institutions or communities. Um, so um, maybe I think my question to sum up would be um, um, in order to facilitate local communities engagement in, in changeable cultural heritage. What would be the, the major challenges? What would be the facilitation? Maybe um, just, but I cannot invite all of you because of the times, um, our, our time limitation. Um, yeah, the Deputy Director Dilshul Rahimi, are you ready? Maybe you can, you can say something on these matters? <coughs> да, можно на русский. На русский. О, о, так, смотрите, по конвенции, статья 2, второй, второй параграф, нематериальное культуры наследия определено в следующих вот доменах, областях. Например, устной традиции, форме выражения и плюс язык, включая язык как носителя нематериального культурного наследия. И второй – исполнительское искусство. Третий – обычаи, обряды, празднества. Четвертое – знания и обычаи, относящиеся к природе и вселенной. И пятый – знания и навыки, связанные с традиционными ремеслами. Из этих пят доменов все эти домены участвуют, то есть наблюдаются в контексте традиционных фестивалей. Я имею в виду в примере Таджикистана. Например, устные традиции, у нас есть фестиваль Андалеп, это есть фольклорный фестиваль, где есть формы выражения, как анекдоты, или исполняют песни. Исполнители искусства, естественно, это, например, фестиваль шашмака, фестиваль традиционная музыка, фалака, так, и обряды, и обряды, празднества, это, естественно, само собой, это есть и как фестиваль Новруз, фестиваль урожая, праздник урожая, и связанные с этими есть знания обычаями, относящиеся к природе. Например, у нас в Таджикистане в празднике в фестивале Сада обычно дыхкане, то есть крестьяне приносят саженцы, семена специальных специальных как это, пши, ну, да, пшениц и на выставке, и на продажу. И кроме этого, и там можно найти специальные уголки, которые дают советы этим как это, ну, работникам сельскохозяйственной культуры. И традиционные ремесла – это парт или часть, это часть фестиваля, который во всех фестивалях есть такие уголки, выставки, продажа продукты традиционного, традиционного ремесла. Um, thank you very much for your um, yeah, yeah, for your um, the kind answer. Um, also, it's, it's, I think it seems to be the fundamental 
um, the questions to jump into the another step um, in order to enhance the um, realize the potential of uh, in intangible cultural heritage. Uh, let me move to another um, some uh, small um, questions which has been raised by um, some yeah the um, through the YouTube. Um, the question would be which countries participate in the Silk Road um, Intangible Cultural Heritage Network? Um, seems to be very the, maybe the yeah, easy question, but I'll the, give you some chance to either uh, uh, Mr. Guljat Nokerbek or um, Mr. Rustam Muzapayev. Can you? Some yeah, answer on, on these matters. Which countries participate in the Silk Road ICH network? Anybody can yes. do it. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Facilitator. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Kazakhstan, but also Uzbekistan is participating in the network, and we are ready to uh, respond to your question uh, if you can formulate it. Sorry, I was absent for two minutes when you were. No problem. It. No problem. Okay. Um, um, yeah. The, uh, in terms of what that were some recording now, the um, uh, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Turkey, Mongol, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Korea, Kyrgyzstan, Iran is now actively engaged in this networking uh, the process here. Let me move to another um, the reader's question on what is the domain of uh, intangible cultural heritage? It might be the conception or a concept of the in um, in yeah, intangible cultural heritage. Can I invite the ambassador? Can you the maybe so the education process? Can you do it? to some answer. <laughs> you are working for UNESCO. <laughs> Uh, can you repeat, please, your question? Because I didn't hear very well. Yeah, the, a little bit disconnected. Um, the, um, what is the domain? I mean, the um, coverage or the definition of intangible cultural heritage. Um, yeah, the, but, but it's like a more, more but the theoretic question seems to be, but you can answer. Yes, because, uh, uh, to be clear, may I to, yeah. we have translation here, yes. Uh, from, from the English to uh, from the Russian to the English. Uh, um, okay, can you re uh, the, the respond to us by English? Is possible? Uh, because now the in YouTube process, maybe the. Um, the simultaneous interpretation between Russia and the English is not seems to provide. So you can you can make answer by English. Uh -huh. I think is uh, uh, in your, uh, for to to your answer to the, your question is uh, was given by my colleague from the Tajikistan. He defined very very clear and very. So what it means intangible heritage, uh, what can be included, what in which spheres, uh, which how to say uh, traditions, uh, other things uh, can be included. I think it, it was very clear answered mm -hmm. by my colleague from the Tajikistan uh, in your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. The, I really appreciate your um, yeah. the. Um, explanation based upon your experience, experience, and also the um, the unique the Tajikistan cases. Normally, in theory, article, theoretically, um, the the coverage of intangible cultural heritage does include the oral traditions and performing arts, and also social practice, rituals, and the festive uh, events. Sometimes uh, it may include the knowledge and practices. Um, concerning the, the about the nature and the universe, 
and also um, it does include as well traditional craft, uh, craftsmanship. Um, so um, very wide coverage, but this um, my my answer would be totally based upon uh, theory basis, uh, and also the ambassador um, the mostly covered the uh, the experienced manner. Thank you very much. Um, we have another question. No. No. Um, yes, I think the time has come. Now the um, we already we we covered our um, the questions raised by uh, the YouTube user, and we have uh, around uh, yeah the three three to four minutes here. Um, yeah, is anybody? Um, I already the in the in advance of um, st starting our um, the panel discussion. I already the make a s small wrapping up um, the preparations already gave you. So, is there anybody to add add further? Yeah, is there anybody to make a comment or any some suggestion? You maybe I'll give you two two minutes. One or two minutes. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, thank you very much. And also with this momentum, and also the, through this um, the uh, session, I realized that how it is important that our um, the forum secretariat, I mean Korea Central Asia Forum Secretariat, needs to be engaged in the. Um, this kind of uh, the facilitation of uh, intangible cultural heritage in um, which which occurred in Central Asian countries, and also really informative and also gave gave a lot of um, some ideas and also aspiration based upon your suggestion, based upon your presentation, and also based upon um, your comment will make a um, the more scrutinized uh, roadmap. Um, in cooperation with the I, the, the yeah, each what's the name? I say each, each cup, <laughs> very, very difficult. Each cup together will also the yeah, sk yeah sk make some scheme or organize a the roadmap to uh, facilitate um, Central Asia's in, in, in tangible cultural heritage. Um, yeah, now I'd like to uh, finish it, uh, my comment here. Really, uh, thank you very much for joining us, and also I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, once we totally get over our coronavirus, either in Central Asian countries, either or, or the Korean. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim and presenters. I'm grateful for the instructive and helpful information presented today. I hope uh, the observers and participants found your session as illuminating as well. Uh, for members who are not part of the working group, the day has come to an end. Tomorrow, we will continue with the strategic meeting session two, which will start at uh, 1300 hours, GMT plus nine, or Korean Standard Time. I'm sure the sessions will be as enlightening and as uh, successful as they were today, and I look forward to your attendance.